everybody so welcome back we're getting ready to give you some more here on this morning and in this segment we have the NCA as well as the National Trust alongside the US Peace Corps with the help of Massey stores throughout a competition to engage the youth when it comes to conservation as well as preservation of our oceans and marine life and trust me the results of that was definitely outstanding but I'm not gonna give you much details right now let's check out our friends to see exactly what it was all about Dosha Sentuma, Accountant, National Conservation Authority. We're here today on BG Beach to find the Peace Corps volunteers, the St. Lucia National Trust, Massey Stores and Harris Pins for their contribution towards the conservation beans. These beans will be used on some of the beaches around the island. This initiative started from the conservation clubs at our various schools, which was initiated by the Peace Corps volunteers. Basically, the idea is to help keep our beaches clean, this project was tremendously used and decorated. We could see these lovely beans that we have here. The National Conservation Authority would like to see this initiative continue in the future and to have more schools coming on board. We'd like to encourage our citizens, our visitors and users of the beach to continue to keep St. Lucia clean. We'd like them to utilize these lovely beans that we have here today because we also have lovely conservation messages placed just to keep St. Lucia clean, to encourage persons not to litter and to try and preserve our environment. Coretta Crookstrap, Communications and Advocacy Officer with the St. Lucia National Trust. And today we're very excited to be here and we were delighted when Sarah and Sean, those are the Peace Corps volunteers attached to NCA, approached the National Trust to partner on this very important initiative. Um, we were there from the, the onset, even helping with the creation of the name of the campaign. And we would like to thank Harris Paints for providing the bins and the paints that the students utilize to create these amazing bins. And of course, we cannot forget Massey Stores in Lucia because they give the, the, fine, the funds um, to support this initiative. There were several components. The, there was a cinema viewing of Our Blue Planet. There was the beach day when you had the NCA, the National Trust, Caribbean Sea. They interacted with an NCA worker, just finding out essentially how important it is that our, um, our ocean is to our very survival. So we're really hoping that other entities come on board because the trust has placed the bins on its website and facebook and we realize that persons are saying what about other communities it's not just cast trees or um Grosely. this should be an island-wide campaign so this is a trust intention to work with nca and we're calling on other corporate entities to come on board so that we can continue to protect our oceans because we rely on it for recreational purposes um, for jobs, the fishermen, seamers, farmers, the tour operators, and um, for even food and medicine. So it's really important that we conserve our oceans. So this is part of the Protecting Paradise campaign, a beach education and action um, project. The uh, goal was to engage local students in beach education um, related to beach ecosystem science and conservation as well. So the first phase was all about educational activities. They saw movie screenings. Um, they came to BG Beach and participated in a variety of activities. Um, and all the knowledge they used in that first phase was uh, inspiration for them in the second phase, which was the painting of these bins, which will be on, um, installed on beaches around the northern part of the island. So the uh, whole objective was that students would learn about their local ecosystems, um, become engaged with them, and really take responsibility for keeping them clean. Um, so we hope that the public will utilize these bins. They will be on Beachy Beach, Red Wee, and Grozy Lake Beach as well. So um, all with the hope of helping to reduce marine litter. So we have three bins. Uh, each one was designed by a different conservation club. We had Grozy Lake Secondary, uh, Corn Secondary and Marsha Combined. Uh, each one was came up with their own message and image that they wanted to put onto their bins. Cornelia Lubin, Principal, Marsha Combined School. At our school we formed a conservation club and Sarah has been assisting our students. We have about 40 students and two coordinators and as she said they have been involved in different little campaigns. They have done cleanups around the school and in the community and um, they were very privileged in designing this bin here today and um, they have really become more, more conscious of littering and um, we are hopeful that 
that's going forward all of our students, teachers, janitors, cooks, everybody in our school compound, as well as within our Marsha community, would become more conscious of litter and dispose of their litter in appropriate ways. And so at our school, we have a bin for waste um, plastics, we have a bin for um, composting, we have different bins for different types of garbage. So that hopefully will instill in them the principle of not littering. Good morning everybody, St. Lucia. Are you ready to start another great day here with us? And we have some interesting news here for you. Are you ready for a conference of a difference? And it's all about female empowerment, so you know we still need more of that. And I have a very special lady here with us as we are at the Serenity Park. So let me introduce Sasha, and she's the founder of E4 Caribbean. How are you, my love? I am excellent. Thank you for having me, Chayla. <laughs> What's up, St. Lucia? All right, now you see, I don't like the vibes already. <laughs> so this is how we do it. We like to wake people up in the know wake them up with some good energy and I could already feel it from you uh -huh. so let us talk about your conference because of course it's being put on by E4 Caribbean and it's the first of its kind so we have to know all what's going to be happening sure so the name of the conference is um, resilient women's conference um, and it's under the theme recovering rediscovering and rebuilding me um, I love women I think we all you know have so much that we can um, we can be grateful for for women. We we have so many different roles as mothers, as wives, as individuals, daughters, friends, you name it. You know, we wear those hats. Um, but sometimes we can get so caught up in fulfilling those roles that you don't take care of me, right? And so the emphasis is on rebuilding me because you can only pour out of what is inside of that cup. And so uh, just uh, broadly speaking, we will cover a number of issues, but particularly the skills that we're focusing on is um, increasing self-awareness, coping and resilience skills among women. Um, some of the topics uh, we will be delving into include uh, resilient grieving. Very excited about that. Uh, why? Because, um, you know, life, many times we want to put rose glasses on, you know. Life is not easy, you know. We have the good and we have the bad, and sometimes we suffer losses. Mm -hmm. Many times we associate loss with maybe uh, the physical parting of someone, but sometimes you can lose um, yourself uh, or you can be disappointed with a dream that's not fulfilled, a vision maybe that you had for yourself but that was lost. So how do you cope with this loss? How do you cope with the loss of interpersonal relationships that you thought would have been enduring but uh, have failed along the way? Um, we're also going to be looking at uh, financial resilience, very important, you know. How, what are the habits of a prosperous woman? We're going to be looking at reframing disruptions in life, you know, when we want to su succeed or achieve anything, many times we encounter roadblocks, we encounter setbacks, and so as opposed to, you know, walking around defined by a mistake, how do you redefine it and use it as an opportunity uh, for reinvention? And lastly, we'll be looking at purpose mapping, very important. Why are we here? You know, why are we occupying this space? What are the assets, strengths, skills, experiences that are unique to us that we can use, maximize to increase our personal and professional influence? And I know it's going to be even more special because we have a lady who's coming all the way to St. Lucia for this. I'll let you, you know, give St. Lucia the heads up on that one. Oh my God, Marshawn uh, Evans Daniel, she is a powerhouse, you know, she, there are so many accolades. She uh, was a lawyer in the professional realm, a very savvy businesswoman. She has a story, quite a story herself. Uh, just briefly, um, very purpose-driven, career-driven woman. Uh, she had her own branding agency um, catering to NFL players in the US, um, really high profile individuals, um, had her own home, you know, everything. And uh, she got engaged uh, with the intention of marrying this uh, gentleman. Um, she closed down her business, she moved state um, in the US and, you know, was ready to walk down the aisle with this guy. And she found out, I think six days before the wedding that he was cheating on her, right? With his ex-wife of all people. And, um, you know, of course that's a devastating blow for someone who has been so independent. And so I think 
obviously a very intelligent woman having gone through has gleaned so much wisdom and uh, right now she is a life coach you know catering specifically for women she is an entrepreneur very successful woman um, uh, Fox News correspondent you know the list goes on and on CNN etc you know um, Essence and you know a, a well of, of, of wisdom, a well of insight, and so it's an honor to have her come to St. Lucia, an honor to have her dedicate her time to share with women. It's gonna be awesome. And we also have a counseling psychologist in the person of Sasha Jean-Pierre uh, James. Sasha again, <laughs> not me, but uh, someone yes. else. It's just amazing that she shares the name. I know, right? Um, highly qualified, who will be guiding women on that session related to uh, resilient grieving. Mm -hmm. So that leads me a little bit more intrigued about E4 Caribbean and you know what is about and how did you come up with this? Awesome so I would say that uh, it first started with the education component so E4 stands for empowerment through education engagement entrepreneurship and employment mm -hmm. and I studied in the US and uh, I consider myself to be a well-spoken person and intelligent very humble you saying so <laughs> <laughs> but I was just blown away at how uh, students were able to deconstruct arguments, defend their opinions, you know, no hesitation, you know, going for the kill, very analytical, very critical in their thinking. And it caused me to really say, you know, well, we don't have a lack of um, creative talent in the Caribbean region. We don't have a lack of um, intelligent persons. But why is it that when it comes to, uh, to speaking, when it comes to thinking, you know, not regurgitating information, but really thinking critically, why aren't we seeing more creative ideas coming to the fore? And this is the heartbeat of problem solving. This is the heartbeat of solutions that drives innovation. And so um, I came back really with that thrust to, um, to invest in programming that would facilitate creative thinking among uh, youth. And we started with um, a pilot of project-based learning, which is put on pause for now but will be uh, brought to the fore in the medium term. In fact, really in the real medium term. But um, as I said, E4 stands for education, uh, empowerment through education, engagement, entrepreneurship, and employment. And uh, so we decided to move forward into looking at educating and empowering women. So this started in 2017. So there's been a lot of planning a lot of back-end work and we're so happy to really be pushing it forward uh, this year. Just so that everybody can get the opportunity to be there and experience the magic that's going to take place, where can we get tickets and please, where is our venue? Awesome, something I failed to mention, but thank you, Chayla. <laughs> <And that laughs> <did it. laughs> yeah, so it's happening on the 27th of April, but ticket sales close on April 13th. So for our last minute uh, shoppers, this is something that if you connect with, you know, don't hesitate, mm -hmm. really grab hold of this opportunity. Tickets are available at uh, the cell on Jeremy Street, Shoe Rehab, JQ Mall, Rodney Bay, and also for our Southern people, uh, Dash of Elegance, New Dock Road, View Fort. So really and truly, we're seeing a tremendous response from women all across the, the island. We can only accommodate 90 seats. Um, it's going to be held at Mystique Royal St. Lucian. So I really would encourage once again, if this resonates with you, don't hesitate. Uh, make contact with any of those um, outlets and get your ticket. It's 125 um, EC inclusive of lunch. It's from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. packed. I'm not going to say much after this because this is your food for thought this morning. So I want to thank you very much, Sasha, for being here. And St. Lucia, I just want to reiterate that on the 27th this is when it's happening it's gonna be pure magic and of course you tell a friend tell a sister tell your neighbor so we get all our ladies in so we can make sure we really move mountains and make some strides this year Welcome back everybody. So guess what? Though Francophony Month has just recently ended, we still want to recap a little bit because we promised you that we would bring some highlights from Le Petit Prince, which definitely made waves and it was a full St. Lucian cast that's about to take over the region. Le artiste garçon. But no, she only to be a pilot. Who tell you lady that's what I want to do? Now look at that.
imagine that miles away from my country, all alone in the desert. So you could imagine my surprise the next morning.
So St. Lucia, I want to thank you so much for staying tuned till the end. Of course, I know we had another exciting show for you. And with that, I want to wish everybody a fantastic Tuesday. Matter of fact, a terrific Tuesday because you know what? It's always better when we're rhyming. And on that note, everybody, please just go out. Take some time today to do something nice again. Yes, I know Good Deeds Day passed on Sunday, but that doesn't mean we have to limit us doing things for others to only one day and remember it doesn't have to be grand it doesn't have to be expensive but every little thing counts so let us go out there and start making changes in saint lucia in a nice way so i'm giving you this big smile today and of course wishing you the best day ever and tomorrow we'll catch up again and see how things are going to unfold for that new chapter so i'll see you tomorrow right here on dbs Music